Hello friends, this is a special episode from uh, the Bordeaux show of our favorite Rambolog podcast, In the Field, where uh, history has been written. In this week, uh, past few days, there has been massive protests against a new Georgian bill that would uh, impose Foreign Agents Act that would uh, stifle NGOs and other foreign investments and anyone who was getting uh, money from other countries. That means most of working Georgians, unfortunately, would be considered foreign agents. So, can you tell us uh, something about uh, the protest uh, a few days ago? So, a few days ago, there was protest about uh, foreign agents. Our government was trying to pass a law about foreign agents. Uh, and uh, us students, people came to this avenue to protest about that. Uh, I think uh, it was disrespectful to our people because uh, we, new generation, want to be in European Union. Uh, and I think our government was trying to pass the law which will take us further away from yes. the Europe. Uh, and another question. Are you a CIA spy? Of course, of course, I am, of course, I'm a CIA spy and I'm trying to pass the Putin's law here uh, and I'm trying to be uh, in Soviet Union. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. This law's main focus was actually to stifle anti-government movements. Uh, in, uh, in a year there's going to be a, a re-election. Most of government agencies and uh, non-government agencies especially that are working to connect Georgia to Europe uh, are actually being financed by Europe and everyone knows this but they're trying to paint them as foreign agents against our history and our culture. Unfortunately I had to miss the main protest because I was in another town crafting and <laughs> I was really disappointed. I left the town for two fucking days and they started the whole as revolution without me. <laughs> but I came in time for another protest against new military bill which would uh, force all students and anyone the, the government deemed to go to the army, which is, of course, as a his, uh, history lover and someone who makes armor and talks about uh, ancient battles, I really love and appreciate military history and especially Georgian military. But unfortunately, there are a lot of problems with our military as it is. So, what do you think about the new law they're trying to pass? The government now is basically trying to take away one year of my life. They're going to take away my job. They're going to take away my all my opportunities I have now. They're going to break down all my plans that I had for my future, for establishing a family, growing roots here. All they're doing with this law is encouraging people like me to leave the country and find a home and you, uh, like elsewhere. And I know many people that think like me, that we, we really love this country. Yes. I grew up here, I have family here, I have friends here. I really, really want to stay here and live here and build everything I want to build in my life here. But there, I, I, I'm searching for any hope to yes. to stay here. But every day, they're, they're like coming up with new reasons for me to live yes. and for people in New to foolish laws to make us hate our own yeah, country. Every day, and every day you think that this is the yeah. this is the most stupidest thing they can do, they could do, and the next day they they topped it. <laughs> yes, their creativity for stupidity is endless. Yeah. But are you against the military in general? No, no one is really against the military. All we are saying here, like you could ask anyone here, what we are saying is. We need more budget for our military, yes. but military is not people standing on the, like standing, uh, being security guards, basically. Yes, standing in the, so some, uh, so building, protecting it from, from who yeah. knows if, what. Yeah, if you ask yes. any, any good trained soldier from any country that has good military, they would laugh in our faces yes. if we showed what our military is. And we actually need a good military. We but, actually need a good yeah. military. We need an army. We need budget. We need money for that, which, which we actually have. Yeah. We, we could find money for army if you have uh, money for ISPs and stupid stuff, yeah. like bureaucracy and stuff. But uh, no, one's, no one in the government is thinking about uh, our ability to protect ourselves yes. like for the country. They're, they're really trying to come up with reasons for me and other people like me to leave the country or to or to 
break our spirits. Yeah. But yeah. Georgian spirit is unbreakable. Yeah, I hope for this. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thanks. This law would uh, actually hinder people like me who are pro uh, the military, pro uh, protecting Georgia, because unfortunately our post-Soviet government system, especially military, is really outdated and is more focused on grunt work and unpaid labor as uh, so stationed in like protecting different storage rooms or uh, being stationed in some azarma somewhere uh, or protecting prison where you have to shoot people if they try to escape well this is a whole other topic but i would like to focus right now about the history of georgian protests that no this isn't cia sponsored bloody bloody blah, blah, blah and uh, no, our government's actions are, do not represent the people's will. Basically, for short context, you can uh, watch my previous uh, Rambolog video, a link down there you know, in the description, where I talk more broadly about Russian imperialism in Georgia. But short version is, we asked for uh, Russian assistance. They came here, invaded and uh, conquered uh, Caucasus and Georgian territories. And they started brutally genociding and killing and russifying different ethnic groups and creating tensions between us. From the get-go, Georgians were uh, planning revolts, planning protests against uh, then Russian imperial government. But every time it was brutally shut down and there were horrible massacres even here a hundred years ago or a bit more, 150 years ago or something against uh, Russian imperial government. And when the, uh, as you know, Soviet revolution started, Georgia actually gained independence and started to build its own nation. But then uh, Russians and unfortunately a lot of traitorous Georgians helped invade uh, our country and force us into Soviet Union, where again a lot of anti-Russian uh, protests, anti-governmental protests happened. They were all brutally shut down. Even my great-grandfather was uh, part of a anti-Soviet liberal uh, government uh, to free Georgian from uh, Russian influence. And he was deported for like 15 years and after serving his sentence was shot and killed. We had a lot of history of protests in Russians. And uh, about uh, in the 70s, one of the massive protests uh, broke out in Georgia about Soviet Union trying to remove Georgian language as the official language of the Republic. Uh, and that was the first protest in Soviet Union history where protesters and freedom fighters won. It was peaceful and the Russian government actually backed down and gave us the ability to keep our uh, language and identity. And that sparked the new generation of protests that this is a continuation of, that we can, through not partisan activity and uh, wars and the sabotage, but actually stepping out into the public and shouting that we want freedom and we want liberty and we want to determine our future works. And one of the first protests uh, that started the crumbling of Soviet Union, of course, took place here. Unfortunately, many people died here. There are squares, of or you can see here, which signify uh, the um, bodies that died in the ni uh, 90s uh, protests, which most of the Georgian uh, adults were young people, as uh, we are now in their uh, uh, 20s and 30s. Our parents' generation started this uh, peaceful uh, protest that was brutally shut down by the uh, Soviet government, but that sparked the uh, idea of free Georgia that has been dead for like about 200 years. After that, unfortunately, our Georgians and Ka uh, Caucasians are really passionate people who love to fight for their freedom and are in constant revolution to, through different empires, but this passion and uh, thirst for freedom and revolution can work uh, against you because after we gained independence from Soviet Union and Russia, there was a lot of bloody uh, infighting between different Georgian factions. Uh, there was uh, this horrible uh, brothers war which took place in the streets uh, in the capital. And there was, of course, um, 
different Cauc Caucasian uh, ethnic minorities in different regions of Georgia uh, started revolting for their own independence. And uh, they were, if you think about it, I really understand every Cauc Caucasian's will for their independence, but Russians actually understand our mentality pretty well. So they basically first gave guns to Georgians to start conflict in the 90s with the Abkhazians, then gave guns to the Abkhazians and uh, the militants to fight against us. So our own passions and lust for freedom and liberty are being used uh, multiple times again, uh, by Russians and manipulated for that. But fortunately, we managed to fight for our freedoms once again, tear down the uh, first government basically was taken over by uh, Soviet, uh, in, uh, I mean, Russian-influenced uh, um, second government, which was then uh, taken down by Western-leaning uh, third government, which was then taken down by the uh, uh, neutral, who was actually in reality pro-Russian government. And now we are trying to take down this fourth government. And it's a whole mess. But unfortunately, freedom is a difficult thing to achieve and freedom is always worth fighting for. And that, that's what we are doing here. And that's what young people who grew up in free Georgia, uh, who grew up on the ideas that you can be free, you can determine your own future. Uh, we will not accept uh, foreign influence. We will not accept occupation. And we willingly wish to join the West. We willingly wish to join European Union and NATO. If you ask me, I would much prefer to do it everything independently, not join any uh, massive organizations because we have bad history in asking different European powers for help. But unfortunately, because of Russian imperialism, we do not have another choice. So what do you guys think about uh, Russians and their influence in Georgia? So I can say that we formally have freedom nowadays, but we can see it because it's just formal and it's not working in reality. So we are trying to claim our freedom. And in history, we can see that Russians call us our friends. And we can see it in reality because yes. they betray us. They so call much, Ukrainians so brothers much. and kill them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. what would they do to their friends? So we can't trust Russians. Yes. That's the fact. So. We can take so many examples of Russians betraying us, but nowadays everyone calls Russians friends because we have the same religion. So the religion does nothing with it. Uh, because their they only they God is the enemies. guy with the biggest club. So, <laughs> so uh, do you have any uh, memories from 2008 war? Because yes, all of us yes. were children back then. Of course, of course. I was like eight or nine, but I was in my village, Gori, and I saw like people screaming, people dying. Mm -hmm. Russian invaded my village, and I barely made it out with my friends and family. Some of my friends died there, and it mm -hmm. was horrible, horrible, horrible. It was horrible. horrible. Yes. So, I was I was in Caspian that day, so. There, are, there were so many helicopters above us, so it was really stressful because we were kids that day, so yes. it was really a tough situation. Yes, that is unfortunately what is uh, the life of any neighbor of Russia. Either you're Russian or you're soon going to be Russian. That's, that's why we fight here and that's why we protest, because we don't want our government yes, to uh, go closer and closer to our mortal enemy. We are Georgian yes. Russia. Yes. I can say I'm proud of Georgian people because yes. we are so low in population, but we are trying to do our best for our freedom and for our people. And I'm really proud of us. Yes. And I saw so many examples and the best one was yesterday and before yesterday. Yes. So these days was a great example for us. Yes. Thank you, guys. My pleasure. How much is it? We want to be free. Unfortunately, we are a small nation and we cannot fight for our freedoms alone. We need help. West is telling us for about 10 to 15 years, they've been protesting as they will let us in, but they, <laughs> they still refuse to. But that's a whole nother story. But West is willing to help us. 
and we are willing to join them. This is not CIA coup. This is not a Western imperialist influence. Eastern Europeans willingly want to join West because they promise freedoms uh, and uh, protection from Russians. If this is a, an imaginary future, an imaginary idea, if somehow Russia stopped, stopped trying to kill us, stopped trying to destroy us, we would love to work with them. We would love to create a united Eastern Europe rather than trying to join Western Europe. But I propose uh, to create a new system called FRUS, Federal Republics United for Sovereignty. <laughs> it's a complicated name. The point is to FRUS. <laughs> yes. The idea is that Eastern Europeans and post-Soviet countries unite as one NATO and EU-like bloc and never let Russia in. We unite, we do not let those NATO in, we make our own NATO that is specifically to blockade and F Rus. <laughs> so basically, all I wanted to do is give a uh, perspective from a Georgian and also a historic, uh, historical point of view and uh, to dispel some myths that has been created around this protest. Also, I would like to mention that no, we do not want to start uh, another war with uh, Abkhazia and uh, Sama Chablo or any other people. We would like to find a peaceful solution to all of these conflicts, but unfortunately, as long as Russia exists here, Here's a little th secret, what Russia does. They sponsor ethnic tensions, then come in as the arbiters to protect the ethnic minorities. In reality, freezing the conflict so that only their influence will uh, keep the conflicts uh, quiet. Post-Soviet republics and other uh, areas, other regions will be reliant on them protection. We do not need them. Without them, there will not be any conflict here. We could find solutions without Russian imperialism and Russian bombs. So fight for freedom, fight against imperialism, all forms of it. I'm focusing on Russian imperialism, but that's what I'm, uh, my people are uh, under. So fight for freedom, fight for liberty, and fight for the future. And do not forget the past. Learn from past mistakes. Thank you. We deserve to be free. Yes.